A lot of parents right now are trying to find things to keep their kids busy. What better way to keep them busy than to show them how to make something with their hands? Plus, it's an excellent opportunity to spend some quality time with your kids. There's not much more approachable building projects out there than a birdhouse, so I'll show you how my youngest two girls and I made a fun weekend project out of it. Welcome to the White Lab Workshop. I'm Brent, and I'm here with my two youngest kids to give them the opportunity to build something with their hands. Before we get into it, I show them how some of my tools work and let them play around to get comfortable with them. I was inspired to do this sort of shop class idea by Bob from I Like to Make Stuff. I'll link his excellent series below. Try to pull it towards you. See how that was pretty easy? Yeah. Now set it down. Try to push it away from you. Our plan call for here. Um, we need a menu. We need to cut a back, a roof, a front, a couple of sides, and a floor. So this is 11 inches right here. Once the girls felt comfortable enough to work with a handsaw, we started cutting our pieces. I had some leftover cedar, which I milled down from a larger piece to prepare for the girls to work with it. Cedar is naturally rot resistant, so it works nicely for birdhouses. Good. Now take your speed square, continue that line all the way across. Very good. We got our free birdhouse plans from nestwatch.org. They have a great site with free plans for lots of different bird types, tailored to the area you live. We opted to make a couple of houses for black-capped chickadees. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. We do lots of woodworking projects and try to include our kids as helpers whenever we can. I saw that the hand saws were going to take forever, so I decided it was a good time to explore working with power tools. The jigsaw is a good next step up from the handsaw if your kids are of an age that they can safely operate it. Next up, we tag team the miter saw. I set it up and held the work pieces in place, keeping my hands at a safe distance, then let them work the saw. Not surprisingly, this one was their favorite. After cutting our pieces, we took the rest of the day off and went outside for some exercise. The next day was a beautiful Minnesota spring day, so we took the party out back to the deck. We had holes to drill for ventilation, 
So we mark them out and learn how to use the hand drill. Continue those lines over so that you have a cross. Take this and follow that one down so that it crosses. Here you go. Now you know where the X marks the spot. It's alright. No, mark one inch from the end. starting to auger it out a little bit. Since a birdhouse isn't any good if the birds can't get in it, I showed them how the spade bit works and let them drill the front door. Now comes the fun part, assembly. I showed my girls how to pre-drill and countersink to prep for screws, then drive the screws in with the driver. Assembly is what the girls seem to like the best. It's when things started to take shape and look like a real birdhouse. Our plans call for a removable nail or screw to be added to allow for one side to swing open for cleaning after the birds have left for the year. We didn't notice until we were assembling the second one that the plans call for the sides to leave a slight gap at the top to make room for a pivot.
It's important to remember that these birdhouses don't have to be perfect. As long as the birds have a safe, enclosed space, they'll be happy. Make sure to keep the process fun, and don't worry if the joints aren't perfect. Since we used handheld tools for some of the cuts, we were guaranteed to have small gaps, and that is just fine. The birdhouses really weren't the point of this project anyway. But, if you're a parent, you probably already knew that. If you're looking for other fun projects to do with your kids, I've queued up a few on the screen that I think you'll enjoy. We'll see you over there.